Hi everybody and welcome to video number three looking at the Cessna 152 and this is uh, actually as nose as ever and we're looking at the X-Touch which is a MIDI controller with rotary switches and we're just going to deal with how, them, uh, how I've laid out the rotaries and uh, what commands we need to use for those. So we'll just look at the rotaries in this video. Um, so let's get uh, Flight Simulator up and running. So we're sitting at Elstree and we're all powered up and uh, Everything's everything's uh, charged and ready to go. I need to keep the engine running because we do run out of batteries before I get to the end of this. The battery lasts for about half an hour, I think. So uh, let's uh, bring up my actual uh, controller here and we'll use PowerPoint to take us through some of the settings and we'll look at how it's done in XS and O's. So this is the 152 and uh, for those of you who haven't seen the x -Touch Mini you really need to go back and look at uh, some of my previous videos uh, to see how it all works. But essentially there are 8 rotary controllers at the top and 16 uh, buttons along here which have got LEDs that we can control. And there are two banks, we can actually allocate two functions to every single one of these and each of the rotaries also has a switch on it. So um, that's effectively 16 rotary controllers, 16 press buttons here, um, 32 buttons there. Um, and we've got the, the, the controller over on the right hand side, let's just make a few adjustments to this so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's move it across a bit. And we'll pull this window a little bit wider. So here we've got a bank controller. We can control whether we're in bank A or bank B. And what I do is I label above when it's bank A, a and underneath when it's bank B. So the moment we're in bank A or layer A as they call it, uh, I never really use this controller. I haven't found anything that it uh, does yet. Um, in the music world it would be a volume controller or something like that. So these are all rotary controllers that we can turn left and right. So the first thing that we're going to set up is the comms one and we have two uh, controls one for megahertz one for kilohertz and if we press on this one here that will that click will uh, transfer it from standby to the active frequency so we can see that at work here uh, so it's this radio here that we're going to control and the megahertz control here kilohertz control here and pressing this button here swaps it from standby to active so that's what we're going to do and in axes and o's these are the commands we use so if i turn this one to the right it's this control here com radio hole increment so we don't need to say it's com one just the com radio hole increment and it's uh, incrementing one at a time and we allocate it by just literally turning this knob first time we turn it it'll only know that we've clicked it and the second time in the same direction it knows which way you've turned it right or left so that's how we allocate it and then press save uh, because i've already got it set up so i can just cancel out of that so we've got the increment and the decrement version saying so that'll be turning to the left um, it will just automatically detects which what you're using as soon as you turn the control it finds it so com radio hold decrement done so and then the last control on there is the one that swaps the frequency and it really is just labeled com standby radio swap and it says in brackets it swaps com one across and that's just a click so we don't need to turn anything we just press the button and it done okay so that's what's on the first two knobs here and then i do the one that's underneath com2 and i literally uh put it on here so that will be pressing here to get to bank b and com2 has exactly the same functions megahertz kilohertz and the swap and Again, we'll have a look at that in axes and O's. So I'm on bank B, layer B, and you can see here it's the COM2 radio hole decrement 
increment and pressing this button here would be the swap so that works exactly the same way as the, as the other one just making sure that we are on layer B bank B when we do that okay so that's com one done and then next to that is the VOR radio, the, the VLOC radio. So again, we do pretty much the same thing. VOR1 on the top, megahertz and kilohertz, and the button here to do the swap. So if we turn this one here, you'll see, oops, so let's get on to bank at layer A. It is nav1 radio whole decrease and increase uh, left and right and pressing this button here would be the swap so here nav1 radio swap that's on this button here so that's megahertz and kilohertz and then we do the same for layer b but this time it will be nav2 radio whole decrease increase or the fractional increase and decrease and nav2 radio swap so that's those, those all allocated both on layer a and layer b so sorry about next door's fire burger alarm going off uh, they've got a very sensitive burger alarm i will shut the door Okay, so the next thing we want to control is the uh, OBS one, which is here, it's this one here. So what uh, heading we're going to choose with VOR. So it's this knob here that we're going to do. And if we bring back there, it's OBS one here. And it is VOR one OBI decrease and increase. So that's uh, fairly obvious what that one does. And guess what, we do the same for two on bank B. So that would be the VOR2 increase and decrease that work here. So they're, they're exact, set up exactly the same. So just to remind you here, it's just set up here with the turn and then click save. It's really easy. So back onto layer A. There's OBS2 done. Uh, I've got it so that we can turn the ADF card. If I just get over to the ADF, it's this one here. So we can turn that, which is useful for calculating drifts and offsets, things like that. I, I very rarely use it, but I put it there for completeness. So uh, on the ADF, we can control that. And again, if we bring in it's really obvious ADF card decrease and increase so decrease to the left increase to the right and you can see that all working quite happily so what's next the barometer so that's uh, this one here which sets the altitude uh, and that's controlled using this one here and this one is a bit weird we've seen this one before though if i bring up axes and o's and if i turn that on you'll see it's called the colesman so we've got a colesman increase and decrease but uh once you remember that it's that it's defined and set And the next one is the glare shield. Uh, let's go back to here. And what we need to do now is to actually make it a little bit more dusk so you can see the lighting. So that is this mystery button here. Uh, what that does is if we turn this, it controls the red lighting, um, turns it up and down. and what we need to do, if we go back to my PowerPoint, 
is we need to uh, switch it on by pressing the button and then increase and decrease it on the glare shield okay so we do need to have an on switch first um, on the cockpit here it automatically as soon as you move it it turns it on but we need to switch it on first of all so let's have a look at the button first of all so on layer a when we press the button it is glare shield light set is what we need to do and that turns it on so it's just a click on that button there and then the button to control it is the light potentiometer so let's have a look at that this is the decrease one so we choose light potentiometer to decrease and we tell it here which potentiometer we want to work on it's number five so we are transmitting a five and that will be the decrease and exactly the same for the increase so it's light potentiometer increase and sending a five to it okay so that's that one turning right and this one turning left and that's what gives us control over the lighting so if we see that now it's much better for night flight than the actual dome light if i turn the dome light on you can see how bright that will be flying with that so it's better to have the dome light off when we're flying and using the red light does it so it doesn't affect your night vision so we've got uh, control over that um, and we just turn it down to switch it off once it's switched on it stays on but the very first time you do need to click on it to get it to to come on okay so that's the the little teaser i left on a previous video how that's going to work so that's my glare shield sorted back to that point so that's the glare shield these ones here i just have that for controlling the adf uh, bit, we've seen this before uh, incrementing by 100 by 10 by 1 and we need to have a 0.5 because some of the uh, VORs have a 0.5 so pressing that button will add a 0.5 to it and I can show you that in operation if I go back to my flight sim and let's go back to daytime so some around there okay so let's kind of look at my ADF in operation over here so uh, it's on layer B and that would be the hundreds, the tens, the units. And if I press that once, you'll see it adds a point at the end and it's 0.5 and I'll show you how that's programmed. If I press it again, it'll have another 0.5 so it will carry over quite happily. Okay, so how is that programmed? Let's bring up. And we'll just do the hundreds first of all. So it, this one here is really easy. ADF 100, decrement increment is the actual command we're looking for, the so decrease and the increase. Tens are the same, units are the same, so they're just separate commands issued to each. But this one here is one that's interesting. The fractional um, increment carry, and it actually adds 0.1. But we want it to add 0.5 so to rather than press it five times we roll this one so it repeats and it duplicates it five times so it will add 0.5 and we do the same on this button here and we can do a decrease as well so we can go up and down by 0.5 so exactly the same ADF fractional decrease with a carry and we ask it to do that repeat it five times so it adds 0.5 to it and you can see the add she puts the point on and the subtract will take the point away so those are the two buttons i'm using there to control the adf we can't control this uh, i can't get any access to this so we have to do this manually so we have to turn it on to adf to actually turn the adf on um, that's the only thing i can't find how to control at the moment with the ADF so but we can control the numbers so that's quite handy um, 
And that's it really, that's all the rotary controllers that we need to do. That's all I've got available to. So the comms one and two, the LR one and two, the OBS one and two. So I hope that's all logical, um, we can set that up. That just turns the ADF card, so I've kept all the control knobs, it's like uh, the Colesman, uh, the glare shield is there, and the bottom bit here is just the ADF um, unit on the right hand side of the cockpit, and I'll put it on the right hand side here. So that's my logical layout as far as I'm concerned. We've got lots of buttons left at our disposal. On the other aircraft I've done, the uh, 172, this is filled up with uh, flight planning and uh, autopilots and everything. And we haven't got any autopilot or GPS or flight plans that we can put in. So we've got all these buttons left. So I've used those for a bit of an experiment and uh, tried some other ideas with it, which I will show you in the next video. Okay, so let's just have Sorry, I need to move this out of the way so you can see what's underneath here. Ah, there we are. The barometer, the coalsman there, the glare shield here. So that's the glare rotary and the switch on and off to switch the lights on and off is the press for this. And underneath I've got the ADF-100, the TENS, the units and the add point 0.5. And I've actually got the takeaway and decrease by 0.5 as the switch on there when we're in layer B. So that's what was underneath there. I forgot to move it for you, but I'm sure that you can appreciate and work out what I was doing. Okay, so I will see you in the next video when we'll talk about doing some things with the buttons. It might be interesting. Okay, see you next time.